Thanks for the introduction. Uh, hi everyone, I'm Navid and I'm gonna talk about separate separations of CPM circular security for any cycle length. Uh, this talk is based on two independent works, one by me and Chris Picard, and one by Venkata Kofula and Brent Waters. Okay, let's get started. Back to classical notions of security, we have two well-known definitions. One is CPA security, which says that encryptions of adversarially chosen messages are computationally indistinguishable. You know, the attacker submits two messages and receives the challenge cipher text, and it has to determine which one is encrypted under public key. And one is CCA security, which is defined similarly, except that the attacker uh, has access to decryption oracle. So the question is, what is common in both of these definitions? And the point is that both of these notions only consider the message that can be generated by the attacker. So let's consider a situation in which we have encryption of secret keys. In this figure, each directed edge shows that a uh, tail secret key is encrypted under head's public key. For example, an edge from Bob to Alice shows that Bob's secret key is encrypted under Alice's public key. So as long as there is no cycle, uh, we can say that CPA security of each individual encryption scheme suffices for the CPA security of whole system. This is observed by Goldwasser and Micali. Uh, and now the question becomes, what if we have a cycle? OK. Uh, to answer the question, what if we have a cycle, it turns out that hybrid argument breaks in this setting and we have uncertain security in general. So it might be secure or it might be not. Uh, to see that this example is not just a superficial thing, we have a few applications which use key cycles like password managers and disk encryption utilities, anonymous credential schemes which was introduced by uh, Kamenech and Lysianskaya, and proving computational soundness of symbolic protocols by Dao et al. And uh, more recently, and maybe the most famous example is uh, bootstrapping technique for obtaining unbounded fully homomorphic encryption by Gentry. So what kind of definition captures this requirement? Let's see. We say that the public encryption scheme is a uh, case circular secure if an encryption cycle is indistinguishable from encryption of junk message. So in other words, if you encrypt a first secret key under sec uh, second public key, uh, second secret key under third public key and so forth, and then cycling back uh, case uh, secret key under first public key should be indistinguishable from encryption of all zeros. This definition can also be strengthened to key-dependent message security, which considers functions of one or more secret keys. Now the main question becomes, does CPA or CCA imply case circular security? The answer is negative, and we have a few separations based on different assumptions. Let's have a look on prior separations. We have this folklore result for one circular security, which says that any CPA security scheme uh, can be transformed to one that is still CPA secure, but not one circular secure. For K equals 2, there are separations based on uh, standard assumptions. Earlier works were based on a 60H assumption on bilinear groups. And uh, more recently, we have counterexamples from learning with errors and decision linear assumption. And then, despite good uh, progress for K equals 2, only noun separations for k greater than 2 are based on uh, somewhat strong obfuscation assumption. One uses virtual black box obfuscation, uh, which later they refine their scheme to rely on I.O., and one uses indistinguishability obfuscation. Okay? The question is, can we get rid of obfuscation assumption for the case k greater than 2? And the, here is the main theorem uh, which asserts that for any k greater than 1, there exist CPA security schemes which are not k circular secure based on uh, learning with errors uh, and its ring variant, variant for n to the k approximation factors. Uh, these are first separations for k greater than 2 that do not rely on obfuscation assumptions. And constructions are not specific for just k. They are also k prime circular insecure for k prime less than k. We used a few new techniques to achieve these results, such as telescoping product for learning with errors, which is sort of 
the main idea in both works and tensor LWE to get commutativity of the LWE secrets. Here we see features of both constructions at glance. Uh, Allow Matthew Picard constructions, which we also call it AP constructions, are somewhat simple and direct, especially in ring setting. We will see it soon. Uh, whereas KW constructions uh, are more complicated. However, it comes with some uh, benefits. Uh, AP constructions has smaller public keys, secret keys, and ciphertext in uh, ring setting, whereas KW constructions is more efficient in plain LW version. And AP constructions use common random string, whereas KW construction has no common random string. And finally, AP constructions handles uh, just uh, constant cycle length in plain LW version, whereas KW constructions handles polynomial cycle length. Okay. Before going into the construction, let's see a useful abstraction, uh, which is called cycle tester and introduced by uh, Bishop, Hongberger, and Waters. We say that the tuple of randomized algorithms, gen, enc, and test together is a cycle tester when gen and enc is CPA secure. Note that definition of CPA security does not involve any decryption algorithm. So we are not concerned with decryption. And given K public keys and corresponding cipher text, test distinguishes cycles from non-cycles with a noticeable advantage. Here is the theorem from BHW15, which simplifies our job to make a counterexample. It says that a K cycle tester plus essentially any CPA secure or CCA secure scheme implies separation of K circular from CPA or CCA security. And again, by separation, we mean a scheme which is CPA or CCA secure, but not K circular secure. Okay, uh, let's have a quick review on lattice trapdoors. GenTrap is a randomized algorithm which uses A bar as common random string and R as random coins, which also we call it trapdoors to generate matrix A, uh, where A has A bar as its prefix. Once you know the trapdoor for matrix A, it allows you to compute short random X such that AX equals uh, any, right any arbitrary right-hand side. Note that this uh, inverse operation is not a normal inverse operation and it's a rather randomized procedure. And finally, this A inverse operation is also known as Gaussian pre-image sampling, which has been used in many cryptographic contexts. Now let's get into the construction. Uh, here the message space is identical to the secret key space. Uh, first, uh, to set up, we sample a uniform A bar as common random string. So uh, key generation is uh, very simple. Uh, to generate a key, you sample a trapdoor from randomness space and then you run gen trap on A bar and R. So A is our public key and R is our secret key. Encryption algorithm is more uh, interesting. Uh, to encrypt a message, which we view it as a trapdoor uh, under public key A, we run gen trap on A bar and message to get the matrix A tilde and then we choose a short matrix S. So the ciphertext would be A tilde inverse of noisy SA, or we can view it as Gaussian pre-image of LWE sample for which S is short secret. And finally, uh, to test the cycle, we simply uh, compare prefixes of two products where each product uh, is uh, one public key multiplied by all of the ciphertexts. Uh, note that uh, here uh, two public keys uh, are arbitrary and we can use uh, any two different public keys as long as they have different index. Okay, let's see uh, why cycle tester works. First, we, when we encrypt secret key ri minus one under next uh, public key ai, we run gen trap on a bar and ri minus one to get ai minus one and then uh, the ciphertext would be AI minus one inverse of noisy SIAI. Or again, uh, the ciphertext can be viewed as a Gaussian pre-image of a noisy LWE sample. Okay, uh, let's see what cycle tester computes. Uh, if we have a look on telescoping product for K equals three, in the first line we could rewrite C0 as A2 inverse of S0A0. 
Here we see that uh, A2 and A2 inverse annihilate each other, and what uh, left is a 0 A0, C1, C2, up to small nose. In the second line, again, we can rewrite C1 as A0 inverse of S1, A1, and then A0 and A0 inverse annihilate each other, and then doing similarly, finally, we get S0, S1, S2, A2. If we do the same thing similarly for the other chunk, uh, what we get is uh, S1, S2, S0, A0. So tester gets uh, almost equal chunks, except with uh, different public keys and different order. Uh, but it's not so difficult to address these issues. The first point is that, uh, thanks to GenTrap, all of the public keys have common prefix A bar. And the second point is that, in ring LW, we know that the SI correspond to ring elements, so they commute under multiplication. So that's why a cycle tester works uh, in ring setting. However, unlike other cryptographic constructions, uh, the ring-based uh, version does not immediately tra uh, translate into plain LW, uh, mainly because matrices SI do not commute. Uh, using tense ring technique for LW, we get commutativity of the SI, and then consequently we get uh, plain LW construction. I'm not going to get into that because of time, but you can refer to the paper uh, to see more details. Uh, now I want Venkata to continue the talk on KW construction. Thanks. Okay. Oh. Hi. Thanks, Hi. So this separation will be based on joint work with Brent Waters. And in this part, we show an LWE-based encryption scheme, which is not K-circular secure. And uh, this K could be any polynomial in the security parameter. And while both separations have some common features, um, the two constructions are inherently different. And as a result, each has its own pros and cons. In particular, our scheme is more complicated, but uh, it does not require the common random string, does not require commutativity, and can handle poly, poly length cycles. So as a warm-up, I'll first present a separation for k equals to 1. And uh, as Navid mentioned, uh, separation for k equals to 1 is pretty trivial. You can convert any in-CPS scheme into one that is still in-CPS secure, but not case one circular secure. But the reason I'm presenting this is because uh, it has more structure, and it will lead to a more general case circular secure co countering sample. Okay. So uh, we need to present three algorithms, the key generation, encryption, and the testing algorithm. First, the key generation. Uh, this chooses a large number of random matrices R1 to RL, uses each of these matrices as randomness for generating the AI matrices using the GenTrap algorithm. Next, it chooses a large number of uh, matrices X1 to XL, and plus minus one scalars Y1 to YL, which are random subject to the condition that summation YI times XI is equal to zero. The public key consists of two L matrices. Uh, the first L are YI times AIs, and the remaining L are the XI, XI matrices. And the secret key is simply the randomness used for generating the AIs. Okay. Given this public key, let's see how the encryption works. The encryption also consists of, uh, for each message consists of L components, and each of these components is used as randomness for GenTrap. So each of these components MI gives us a matrix ZI. Next, you choose a short matrix S, and the ciphertext consists of L components, where the ith component is ZI inverse of an approximation of S times XI. Okay. So given this public key and the ciphertext, let's now see how the test algorithm works. The test algorithm is really simple. Uh, it, takes the, oops, uh, it takes the ith component of the public key, multiplies it with the ith component of the ciphertext, and then checks if the sum is close to zero. To see why this works, let us look at the encryption of the secret key. So the ith component is AI inverse of an approximation of S times XI. So now if you multiply this uh, uh, ith component with the ith com component of the public key, you'll get YI times, A YI times AI inverse, AI, YI times AI times AI inverse of S times XI. So uh, this is nothing but yi times s times xi. So if you sum them all up, it is you know, approximately s times summation yi xi, which is equal to 0. So in this way, if you have an encryption of the secret key, then uh, the test algorithm outputs uh, 0, or a short matrix. And instead, if you have an encryption of zeros, then uh, 
the final matrix that you get is some large matrix, and hence you can distinguish between the two scenarios. Okay. So now how do we go from k equals to 1 to k greater than 1? So for this, um, we need to modify our construction. And for this, uh, our scheme will have uh, the key gen and the encryption algorithms will have two modes of operation. And the test algorithm will be using the first public key and the k ciphertext. So this is what it'll look like. And uh, for simplicity, for now, let's assume that the first public key and the first ciphertext are of the form that we've already seen. Okay. The remaining ciphertexts are, uh, are computed in such a manner such that if they form an encryption of the secret key, then if you combine each column, then um, yeah, you get yi times xi for each column. So if, if these form encryptions of the secret key, then uh, if you combine each column, then at the bottom you get via some matrix times yi times xi. So actually the main action is happening with only with the first public key and the first ciphertext. The other ciphertexts are merely propagating the yi values. So let's see how to implement this. Um, for this, we will first extend the uh, cycle tester framework of BHW to uh, have two, two special modes called the leader mode and the follower mode. And the leader mode is what we've already seen. Um, so uh, in this uh, abstraction, we have five algorithms, and two for um, the leader mode, two for the follower mode, and one the tester algorithm. The key gen and the encryption algorithms work as expected. The key gen gives out public keys and secret keys, and the encryption gives out ciphertext. And we require in CPA security for both the leader mode and the follower mode. And the test algorithm must be able to distinguish between k cycles and encryptions of non cycles if the first public key and the ciphertext are in the leader mode. So if we can construct um, these five algorithms, then it's easy to see how. It's easy to see how this implies a k-cycle tester. I won't talk about that in this talk. But it's easy to transform the k-cycle tester with leader-follower setup to one to the BHW k-cycle tester. So let's now look at the five algorithms. First, um, we look at the leader mode, which is very similar to the one-cycle one separation that we've already seen. The key generation algorithm chooses a bunch of matrices using the gen trap algorithm. And then it chooses the xi matrices, these yi scalars, and construct the public key as shown. And the leader encryption algorithm uh, is also, as we've seen, um, we'll use the message components as randomness for gen trap, compute zi matrices, choose a short matrix, and the ciphertext consists of zi inverse of an approximation of s times xi. The follower mode is also really simple. Uh, uh, to, uh, to, to generate a follower mode public key, you first choose L matrices using the GenTrap algorithm. These matrix, matrices correspond the um, public key, and the randomness is the secret key. And finally, uh, the encryption algorithm um, uses the message components as the randomness for GenTrap. It, it computes the matrix ZI, chooses a short matrix S, and the ciphertext is, uh, consists of ZI inverse of S times AI. So know that this is very similar to the leader uh, encryption, except that we are using S times AI instead of S times XI. For the test algorithm, uh, we have these, uh, we have the first public key and the K ciphertext. We compute the product of each column and then check if the sum of the products is close to zero. So to see why this works, let's look at the case for K equals to three. And we have the three public keys where the first one is in the leader mode, the remaining two are in the follower mode. And um, we have the three ciphertexts where uh, the first two ciphertexts are in the uh, follower mode and the last one is in the leader mode. So now uh, let's look at the first ciphertext, which is an encryption of SK1 using PK2. This is nothing but A1i inverse of an approximation of S2 times A21. Similarly, the second ciphertext, C CT3, is consists of components of the form A2i inverse of an approximation of S3 times A31. The last one is in the leader mode, and um, it is A31 inverse of um, A3i inverse of an approximation of S S1 times Xi. So now if you multiply each column, let's look at the first column. Then if you multiply the first two terms, you get Y1 times S2 times A21. Then multiply that with the third term, you get um, y1 times s2, s3 times a31. And then if you multiply all of them, you get 
uh, y1 times s2, s3, s1 times x1, and so on, uh, yl times s2, s3, s1 times xn. So if you sum these all up, uh, the sum is close to zero because summation yi times xi is zero. So that concludes the uh, construction. I won't talk about the proof. To conclude, uh, we show separations between CP and CCA security and k circular security. And uh, some of the techniques used are telescoping products and tensoring LW. And uh, looking back, uh, so testing cycles can be seen as a very simple form of com computation on encrypted data. So a question, natural question is, can we use these techniques for richer computations on encrypted data? That concludes the talk. Oh, thank you.